In this video, we'll be looking at how we did the ranking system in our game. As our racers are going around the track, we want to keep track of and display which place our player is in. First, second, third, fourth place. Uh, right now, there's four racers in our game. You can see I've got a little text on the screen here that says what place the player is in uh, when we start the game. And it starts, uh, that'll start to update to show that the uh, player is in second place now, first place. If I let these cars get around me here, you'll see that it drops back down all the way to fourth place. So that's updating as we go around the, the track here. So that's the effect that we want to have. So let's look at how we did that. Okay, so uh, to get that effect, uh, we first need to have that text there that can display for us. So we have our place text right here, which is just another UI text. Uh, we set that up in our canvas out here. Uh, so here it is right here, and uh, you can see it's sitting on the screen right there. So you can see we just had some placeholder text in there, which I cleared out. Uh, so now that won't show up on the screen until we're, we're ready for it to actually say something. Uh, once we have that in place, then in our script over here, uh, we've got it set up. And then out here, of course, we go to our game manager and our... Let's see, where to go? Right there. Our place text is here. So again, we just drag and drop that in there just to establish the link with the script. And now we're ready to be able to send text to that. Okay, so what we need to be able to do is have a way of uh, getting what place the player is in. There's several ways we could do this, but the simplest way seemed to be just to use our waypoint system. So we have a system of waypoints throughout our track. And we're already detecting when we cross these to make sure that our uh, racers are not taking shortcuts and such. Uh, and so how our AIs are navigating around the track as well. So what we're going to do here is actually we're going to have each one of our racers just keep track of how many waypoints they've crossed through. And then we can compare that, uh, that, that number of waypoints, to see who has the most. And the one that has the most is going to be in first. So that's kind of our basic strategy for how we're going to do this. So what we did is in our checkpoint script here, we made a, a new variable for checkpoints passed. That's an integer. It's just going to keep track. When the game starts, we're going to set that to zero. And then every time we enter a trigger collider, we're going to check to see if it was a checkpoint. And if it's the checkpoint that is the checkpoint we were supposed to be going to. So if the player is not trying to sneak across the track and cut across uh, places we're not supposed to, then we know they went to the right one. Uh, and then what we're going to do is uh, down here, we will um, add one to that integer variable so that will count up. And then every time one of these racers goes through a checkpoint, we're going to go ahead and have it rank our racers because now some information has changed. So we're going to check to see if we have a new leader in our race and update everybody's place. So that's in the game manager script and it's called rank racers. That's the function. So again, game manager script here is just a variable we made up here that holds a link to our game manager script that's in our game manager game object out in the hierarchy. So let's go look at rank racers. So rank racers is right here. Okay. And you can see here it's called every time a racer hits a checkpoint, it will sort the racers array by checkpoints pass. So the first part for this to work is we actually do have to have this array here, racers array. And racers array has to have all of our racers, the player and the AIs. So we did that up on the start function here to set this up. So we made our racers array right here. It's an array of game object. And at the beginning in the start function, we set that equal to a new game object array and uh, with unity arrays you have to set their length so I know I want all the AIs so I already did the AI array here so I'll have all my AIs loaded up in the AIs array so I can get the length of that okay so if I have three AIs I'll get a three here and then I know I need to add the player so plus one so the length of my racers array is going to be the number of AIs I have plus one for the player in this case I've got four racers in the game so this would end up being a four and I get a new uh, empty array of four uh, index lines four positions 
Okay, then I'm going to loop through that array, um, through the AIs array, because I need to now copy over all my AIs from the AI array to the racers array. So as I loop through the AIs array, I'm basically just going to say, hey, racers array, become equal to AI array. Okay, so this will take the uh, whatever's the position zero, we'll go in position zero here, one to one, two to two, so forth and so on. Okay, once that's done looping through, I'll have all my AIs copied over. And then all I have to do is add my player. So I need the player to go to the last position in the array. So if I go to racers array at AIs.length, in this case that would be position three because there were three AIs at my level, then that would put player at position three. And that works just fine because remember arrays start indexing at zero. So the if there are three AIs, they'll be in zero, one, and two and position three will be open for our player. So that gets all those loaded up. And if you look in our uh, game manager here, if we look in the inspector when we run this, you'll see that the racers array went to size four. It took all three of our AIs and put it in there and the players here as well. So all three AIs and the player. So that works just fine, and that gets our racers array all loaded up. And then this is also written in a way that it doesn't matter how many AIs we put in the level, it'll just work. So we want to keep this nice and flexible. Okay, so now that that's all set up, I've got my racers array. So now when my cars go through a, a checkpoint and rank racers gets called, we're all set. Okay, so this is a little bit complicated because we need to use two different loops here. Because what our idea is, uh, is we are going to sort this racers array by the uh, index, uh, or by the uh, number of checkpoints that they've crossed. Okay? So let's see if I can make this a little bit wider so we can see a little bit more. I might have to shrink the font down just a little bit so we can see the, the lines. Okay, hopefully you can still read this. So. Um, we're going to have an inner loop here. This loop here loops through our racers array and it loops through it backwards. So we want to start at the last index number in the array and loop to zero. We're going to do that because that will allow us to uh, work our way through and work those uh, racers that have the bigger number of checkpoints passed to the top of the list. So uh, we just do a, a for loop, but this time instead of setting i to zero, we set it equal to racers array dot length minus one. So the length of this array would currently be four, so minus one would be three, and three would be the last index number in our array. Then we're going to loop as long as i is greater than zero, and we'll take one away from i each loop so that it goes from three to zero. Uh, every time we loop them, we're going to grab the racer at that position, so in this case racers array three, we're going to get the checkpoint tracker script from that racer because that's the script that has the checkpoints passed variable. That's what we want. Remember, checkpoint tracker is here. It's attached to all AIs and the player. Checkpoints passed is the variable we set up to, check, to count checkpoints as they go through. That happens right here. So that's going to keep counting up. All right. So then going back to our game manager here. Um, so this is going to give us a number of checkpoints that this racer has passed. We're then going to compare it to the one that's right above it in the array. So the one at i minus 1. So if this one is 3, then this will be 2. So in the second position our racer's array, same thing, we're going to get the track point tracker from that guy and grab checkpoints passed. We can now compare those two numbers with an inequality, so we're going to say greater than. So if this one in third position is bigger than the one in second, then we're out of order. Okay, uh, We want the biggest numbers to be to the top of the array. So we're out of order. If we're out of order, we need to do kind of a three-step process to swap it. First, we need to temporarily store one of the objects. So we're going to temporarily store the one that's in I minus one. Okay, So in this case, that would have been number two. We're going to store that in a game object variable so that we don't lose it because we don't want to overwrite something without storing it first. We're then going to take the position racers array i minus 1, and we're going to set it equal to racers array i. So that'll take the, the one that was in 3 and put it in index 2. And then we'll go back and load the one 3 with the one that was at 2, which was the smaller one. Okay, From our temp storage, we're just going to swap those out. So what'll happen here now is if um, the one at 
position 3 in this case was bigger than the one in position 2, we've now made them switch positions. So now they're in the right order. And that will continue to loop through until we hit, uh, until we hit I is 1. Uh, when I is 1, then we'll be looking at comparing 1 and 0, and that's when we want to stop. Okay, so we'll just kind of loop through there. Now, if we swap them, there's a good chance that, that we have more than one that needed to be swapped, and we don't know for sure that we're totally in order yet. So that's what this while loop does. So not only do we need to loop here through our array, but we probably need to loop through it at least twice, if not more times, to make sure everybody's in the order they need to be. So that's what, where this while loop comes in. Now while loop will loop as long as the condition here is true. So I set up a, a Boolean variable here called swap. I set it equal to true originally, so that when it hits the loop, it'll say swap, which is true. So true equals true. That'll pass this test. We'll then set swap the false right away, because we only want to set swap back to true if we actually swap to racers positions in the eraser array. So as we loop through, if one is out of order and we need to swap, then we'll set swap the true. So that now tells us that we're going to have to loop at least one more time because when we hit the bottom of the while loop here, it'll go up and check this. So if we hit made a swap, swap will be true. So true will be true. It'll go back in and run the loop again. So swap will be false. We'll loop through again. This will keep happening until we get all the way through this loop without having any swaps. So once we can check that there were no swaps, we'll know that we are in order. And if we're in order, then uh, swap will remain false. When it hits the top here, false is not true. It'll drop out of the while loop. And then um, we'll update our text on the screen. So plint player rank uh, just actually goes through uh, our racers array. It'll find our player. So this is a search. So we can find out what place the player's in. So we're going to loop through our array, our racers array. We're going to look to see if where the player is. So we got to find out now that we sorted the list as the player in position 0, 1, 2, or 3. Uh, when we find him, then we can update our place text. Player is in, I plus 1. Remember, uh, indexes start at 0. So if he's in 0, he's in first place. We don't want to say he's in 0 place, right? So we have to add 1 to that. That'll update our text. Once we find the player, we can break out of the loop. We don't need to keep searching after we find him. And that will cause it to update. So every time an AI or the player crosses a, a checkpoint, this will happen. And this will keep us as close as we can to real-time placing of our uh, player. Okay? I know it's kind of complicated and that's a lot of information, uh, but that's kind of our walkthrough of how this works. So if you have any questions, make sure you talk to me about it. Otherwise, I hope this helps.